What's up guys, today we're going to be playing some Radical Red 3.0 Hardcore Mode and in this video we're going to be taking on Bugsy, the Johto Gym Leader. And here he is, just going to conveniently sit here and weather that benefits my team until some random trainer decides to challenge me. Well, isn't that great? Oh, didn't see you there. I hope you can disregard what I just said. The name's Bugsy. Say less, Bugsy. That's enough chit chat. It's time to battle. Again, this is Hardcore Mode, meaning overall enhanced difficulty, smarter opponent AI and movesets, and restrictions on the play. Bugsy sends out his first Pokemon Cleavor, straight from the Hisui region. It is raining, of course, so we want to lead with our Swift Swim Ludicola. First thing we want to do here is break Cleavor's Focus Sash. We go for the Fake Out, which is also going to prevent him from setting up Stealth Rocks. Ludicolo Bubble Beam under rain always one-shots Cleavor, which is why it forces him to switch out. We go here. for Bubble Beam, but Bugsy makes a smart play and switches Cleavor out for Heracross. It's not going to be super effective, but Water-type moves being boosted by the rain will still deal some significant damage with Bubble Beam. However, we are in a bit of trouble here. Bubble Beam did not deal enough damage to two shot and we can predict an incoming bug type move so we want to make the predict and switch to crowbat we predict right as heracross goes for the huge mega horn definitely would have took out ludicolo in one shot but crowbat will type resist now this is a much better matchup for us and crowbat should be able to handle heracross just fine we go for air cutter being four times super effective but heracross consumes the cobra berry reducing damage dealt by super effective flying type moves thanks to the cobra berry heracross just barely hangs on and fires back with a stone edge and crowbat goes down in one one shot. By getting a KO, Heracross's Moxie ability activates, raising his attack stat. This Heracross is super dangerous now, so we want to send in Ludicolo, who is guaranteed to outspeed, so we can finish it off with a Bubble Beam. Bringing Swift Swim Ludicolo to this battle was a really smart idea. Although the rain does help Bugsy's team, we want to use it to our advantage as well. If you guys think this video is cool, remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel to see more. Back to the battle now as Bugsy sends out Scizor, his next biggest threat. You know that Scizor wants to go for a flying type move against Ludicolo, so we predict that and switch to our electric type lantern. But before launching an attack, he's gonna go ahead and mega evolve into Mega Scizor. And facing Megas this early in the game is actually insane. Scizor attacks and goes for the dual wing beat. Luckily, we predicted right, and Lantern will type resist. It's a good thing we got Ludicolo out of there because he would not have survived that dual wing beat. On the next turn, Scizor outspeeds and attacks us again with a rock smash, this time dealing a lot more damage and lowering Lantern's defense as well. We're gonna heal from the berry juice, but it's not gonna matter too much because we're going down to the next attack either way. We want to get some damage off while we still can, so we fire off the rain boosted bubble beam, dealing only about a third of Scizor's health. But we can't afford to lose Lantern just yet. After having our defense lowered from the rock smash, we've got to switch out and go into Charmeleon. Our Charmeleon isn't the most bulky, so let's hope we can take an attack here, and Scizor goes for the rock smash, and we take huge damage. We're going to heal up a bit from the berry juice, but it's not going to matter too much, because we're dead to another rock smash. Unfortunately, the rain is going to weaken our fire type attacks, but it's still going to be four times super effective as we hit him with a flame burst, but it's not enough to take him out. Scizor retaliates with another rock smash, and Charmeleon goes down. Luckily, we've got him low enough that we can send in Ludicolo to finish the job. We know we're faster here, but Scizor likes to go for a bullet punch when it's getting desperate, but luckily, Ludicolo will type resist and not take very much damage. We get hit with the bullet punch, but Ludicolo takes it like it's nothing, and we fire back with the bubble beam to finish off Mega Scizor. That's two down, four to go, and Bugsy sends out his next Pokemon, Vickable. Now we're predicting the incoming Bug Bus, so we want to switch Ludicolo out for it. Deadene. Deadene? Deaden? I don't know how to say his name. Luckily, we predict right. Vickavolt goes for Bug Buzz, but Deadene resists it. Now, this isn't the best matchup for us. However, it is the safest. We don't have anything that can hit Vickavolt too hard, but he doesn't have anything that can hit us either. So we go for Charge here. We move first, and this is going to boost our next electric type attack while also raising our special defense. And we're going to need that special defense boost as Vickavolt goes for the Thunder, having 100% accuracy in the rain. However, it's going to be not very effective and also thanks to the special defense boost we barely survived now it's our turn to attack we go for the parabolic charge dealing increased damage from the charge that we used on the last turn dealing a good chunk of damage and also restoring some of our health as well Vigable attacks with thunder again and it looks like we just barely restored enough health to survive this is why we wanted to go for a charge on the first turn so we'd get the special defense boost boost from our electric type attack as well and be able to tank another hit and get off as much damage on Vigable as possible we go for one last parabolic charge it's not going to deal as much as the first one but we're still just trying to get as much chip damage as possible. Unfortunately, it looks like Vickavolt's gonna win the 1v1 as it goes for one final bug buzz to finish us off. However, we did get off some good damage on him, so now it's time to call the cleanup crew and send in Ludicolo to finish the job. And this is why it's so important that we protect Ludicolo this battle. We outspeed and fire off the bubble beam, and it's enough to take down Vickavolt. Just goes to show how important speed and attacking first is, and how great of an ability Swift Swim is. Now that we've got Vickavolt down, Cleavor comes back out to play. Now, this is an easy class. 
clap, all we have to do is click Bubble Beam and Cleavar's Focus Sash is already broken, so we get the one shot. We do land the critical hit, but that crit doesn't matter at all. Ludicolo, Bubble Beam, Under Rain, always one shots Cleavor if the Focus Sash is broken. So here we go, two Pokemon left and Scyther comes out to play. So this is another tough matchup for Ludicolo, but we can still get some damage off here. We fire off the Aurora Beam, it'll be super effective with a chance to lower his attack too. We get the attack drop and that's really nice because Scyther likes to go for Swords Dance and if he uses that too many times, this can get really out of hand. So now having his attack lowered by one stage from the Aurora Beam and having his attack increased by two stages from the Swords Dance, Scyther is now plus one attack. We go for Aurora Beam again, trying to deal as much damage as possible, but it's not enough to take him out. Scyther attacks with Dual Wing Beat being super effective and dealing huge damage, only taking one attack to take down Ludicolo. You put in that work, but now it's time to send out Mind Shao to get the job done. It's really important that we outspeed here because if we take even one Dual Wing Beat, we're toast. Back to the point of the importance of speed and attacking first from earlier, we go for Rock Tomb and we do in fact outspeed. And Scyther goes down to the Rock Tomb. And we've got him on the ropes now as Bugsy sends out his final Pokemon, Araquanid. This game's not over yet. We've got to play this right. We attack with Rock Tomb moving first and deal significant damage, also lowering his speed. Now, Bugsy's Araquanid is a weird Pokemon. He goes for Toxic. He also has Protect. It's kind of a Stolmon, but it also has a huge attack stat and hits really hard. Now, he's got us Toxic Poisoned. He's going to try to stall us out. He's going to store a bit of health from the leftovers. And we'll take a bit of Poison damage. Now, this is fine for now. We would rather be Toxic Poisoned than have him attack us head on because he hits hard. Araquanid, of course, protects this turn. He'll restore some health from the leftovers and we take toxic damage once again. Not much else we can do here besides keep attacking with Rock Tomb. Thanks to his stall strats, he's restored enough HP from the leftovers to survive a second attack. Araquanid finally decides to go on the offensive and attack with a huge liquidation boosted by the rain and it's gonna take us out in one shot. Now, why Araquanid doesn't just go for the liquidation right away, I don't really know. Then again, it is the 3.0 AI, so there's that. With Mineshout down, we're down to our final Pokemon, Lantern, our last hope. Araquanid protects again, just trying to restore as much HP as he can from the leftovers. However, he's only delaying the inevitable. It's not going to be enough as we fire off one final Shockwave for super effective damage to take down the Araquanid. And there you have it, folks. Johto Gym Leader Bugsy. Radical Red Hardcore Mode 3.0 GG. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle. Let me hear your thoughts. I always love talking to you guys in the comments. Remember to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel to see more. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.